If you've ever built a workflow in AnyDen, then you've probably used something like a Google Sheets at some point to either read, write, or update data. One thing you might not realize or remember is that each and every time your workflow needs that data, it's making a slow round trip across the internet just to fulfill that individual request. And it's one of the many reasons why your automation might sometimes feel unreliable or very slow. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a brand new native feature from AnyDen called Data Tables that aims to fix this. It's basically an internal database in AnyDen that you can use to read, write, store information and do it at blazing fast speeds. If you watch till the end, you'll likely be able to skip that next Google Sheet or next API call. Let's dive right in. All right, so if we hop into AnyDen, I'm gonna show you where this feature is gonna live. And if you don't see this on your end, it's rolling out over the next few days, so don't freak out. Now, if we go to the top left here and click on this drop down, you'll see that usually we just have create credentials, but now we have this create data table. And on the main dashboard, when you click on executions as well as data tables, you'll be able to see one, the data tables you already have, as well as specific executions within those tables. So these are examples of me writing to my database, and then these are examples of it erroring out, and I can take a look at exactly why it's erroring out, I can see the runtime, and if you're trying to experiment to see which one is faster, adding to a Google Sheets or this, spoiler alert, it'll be this, this is a great way to be able to do that. So if you wanna make your first data table, all you have to do is click on here, go to create data table, we'll call it demo YouTube live, We'll click on create data table and then you'll have a blank set of columns and rows. So you get ID created at and updated at. This is directly from AnyDen itself. But what you can do is add rows and columns either by right here or by clicking the buttons add row or add column. On the core AnyDen side, in terms of the nodes, when you go to the right hand side and we click on plus right here, if you just enter data, you'll be able to see the second option is now data table and you can see all the sub operations involved. So you can delete a row, get a row, insert a row, update a row, or upsert a row. So basically, the main things that you would otherwise use in something like an Airtable or a Google Sheet. The one thing it doesn't have yet is the ability to send something like a SQL command where you can do select from this table where it matches X filter. To make this a lot more tangible for you, I put together this workflow that has a data set of like seven records and then one with thousands of records, and then one AI agent connected to each and every method that I showed you before. So all we're doing in this workflow is just loading information from an existing sheet. And if we pivot over, you'll see that this table is called data tables PM, and it's just a series of dummy records related to project management. So we have the project name, task description, assignee, due date, status, and hours logged. So to bring this in, all we have to do is execute manually using this click here, and then we load it directly from our Google Sheet to the new data table we created. Now for now, you have to create the data table and the columns before you add the data. Otherwise, you will have some errors and mismatches. And if you have some more complicated data, then you might need to add a set node or something to transform the information before it sits in the new data table. Now, just to execute this, you'll see it takes literally seconds to upsert. Now it's only seven records, so that's why. You'll see on the left-hand side, we have our core fields from the sheet and then we have it written to the database itself. And as soon as it's written here, then you can go into your data tables, into let's say this one, demo data, there we go. I've added it quite a few times, so you can see the same records and rows over and over again, but this is where you could delete everything again if you wanted to. Let's do delete, okay, let's do delete again, because there's multiple rows. And then if we go back into AnyDen, and we click on execute from scratch, Okay, and then we refresh here. You should be able to see that it's written those records to this table instantly. So it's one thing to show you a demo, but it's another one to actually show you live exactly how to recreate that demo. So I'm just going to delete both of these nodes. We will transfer on this execution right here. Let's bring it over here. We'll zoom in. All right. And then we'll add on a new sheet step. So we'll do read get rows and then all we have to do is select the specific sheet so let's go here it's called data tables pm let's do the one that has demo and then we'll just select the sheet sheet one and then all we have to do is that and then add on the new data table so let me do data tables and then we'll click on right here insert row and then we'll just disconnect this for a second so i can just load this in memory so i'll just click on this there we go. 
And the reason why I'm doing that is just to make it that much easier for us to map. And before we can even add any information to this database table, we have to set up the columns. So let's take a peek at what we have in the Google Sheet itself. So in this case, we have row number, task ID, project name. All we're gonna do is replicate those exact columns here. So if I go to here, I just wanna go and double check the exact name to make my life easier. So I'll take task ID, I'll paste it over here, and then we'll do the rest of the columns and come back. All right, so even doing this live, I made a mistake myself. And I noticed that in here, we have the row number two, but I never mapped it in the database table itself. So one, I got an error and it corrected me. Number two is because it's the number two and it's a number field, I had to set it up as a number in the table. So how you would do that, I'll just create one additional column, is you create a name. So in this case, it would be row underscore number. Then you want to choose the type. So it's either string, Boolean, which is just true or false, or date. In most cases, you could just use string. But in this case, because from the payload itself, in Google Sheets, you see this number sign here and here, I just had to make sure that task ID, hours logged, and row number were all actually numbers. And once you do that, you can click on execute workflow. Now I've done it twice, so we should have more rows, probably 14 rows, there we go. And then we're good to go. Now in the real world, a lot of this production data won't look as cute, cuddly, and small as the first sample. So in this example, if we go to data tables payment, in this case I have things like timestamp, log level, service, error code, we have nulls or blanks in the data, and we have fields with both strings and numbers. And you'll notice that even if you select the right data types, let's say string, sometimes it just won't work properly with the data tables feature. So in this case, if I were to remove this set node I have right here and just connect this as is and I run it, you'll notice I'll get a problem, I'll get an error. And this is the error, it says validation error with data store request value 5002 does not match column string. Now, what does that refer to? In this case, as you go through my data, you'll notice that I have all kinds of error codes, 5002, 6050. So the combination of string and number is basically confusing it. So to resolve this, I unlink it and I hook it up to a set node. And in this set node, if we double click it, this is where I'm just assigning each value and basically converting things like two to an actual number, things like timestamp to a string. And if we go to our actual problem column, which is the message column, we also force that to be a string as well. Once we hook that up to this data table, that's where we can do execute workflow and it should work seamlessly because everything's converted into exactly what the table's expecting. And one thing to note is that this is 3000 records and it's taken around 10 seconds to complete, but now it's done and ready to go. So now I have probably double the number of records than before. And obviously the whole point of learning this is to use it in things like your actual workflows and with your agents. So here we just have a basic AI agent node connected to every single permutation of this feature. If you want to really talk to your data, then adding something like a calculator node will make it a lot easier for the AI agent to rely less on a language model to do the math, which now we definitely have models that can do this, especially in thinking mode, but you probably just want to make sure that that's a deterministic operation. And I do have a prompt here that specifies exactly how it should function, when it should invoke different tools like the insert row, update row, upsert row. So I'll make this as well as the entire workflow available to you in the second link in the description below so you can upskill until this feature is wildly available. And theoretically how it works is I can go here, ask the question, for example, how many rows do we have in our data set? All right, we send that over. There we go, it goes and invokes this one, which was the get rows in table. It should come back with the right result. And if we take a look at the right hand side here, it says there are 3,001 rows in the data set. That includes probably the headers as well. And if we say something like, can we add a new dummy row to this data set? Just add it directly to the table. Just use the exact same structure of the table and make a brand new row. If we send something like that over, it should be able to invoke the insert row, which it did right there. And there you go, it's added a new dummy row. And it even tells us if we go through the execution, the actual row of data it's added as well. And that's pretty much it. Not to tease, it will be here in the next few days, wildly available to everyone. But this will be another great tool to add to your tool set to be able to take your workflows to the next level and reduce your dependence on third-party APIs like Google Sheets, Airtable, and the like. If you found this helpful, then please feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in things like automation, prompt engineering, and agents every single day, then check out the first link in the description below. I'll see you in the next one.